it's amazing to have a show in such a big place. And uh, I've been coming here since I went to art school. And uh, I love the building, you know. And so after I said yes to doing it, I then immediately started getting um, really, really worried and freaked out about it. Uh, because I realised that it, it was going to be a collection of, you know, of a little bit of everything that I've been trying to do in my life so far. And the, I, the idea that, um, that this is what I amount to, you know, scares me. Because uh, I don't think it's good enough, you know. <laughs> People often ask Martin, what's the point of it? And I think Martin, as with this exhibition, is quite happy to give that question back over to viewers and for them to have, make up their own minds um, about their experiences of the work. I think it's a good question. I can only try to control my side of it. It's just like doing a gig, really, you know, trying to, I wanna, I wanted, I wanted to put on show that all the, the, all, all the things that I that, that um, I thought were all right, you know. <laughs> One of the first artworks that the visitor to the exhibition encounters is a large sculpture or installation by Creed. From the outset, it's been very important to Martin that people are able to walk underneath the sculpture and encounter both. Uh, the, the rotation of the sculpture, to see it from below, um, but also the slight anxiety that you might feel as it whizzes above your head um, and, and you feel the air brushing your hair as it goes past. It's a very dramatic beginning to the exhibition. I wanted to try and use all of the route, all of the spaces including the uh, uh, kind of spaces that you wouldn't necessarily think were the most important ones. <laughs> Often if you had a show in a museum it would be a kind of one, one part of the, of you know, one wing. But that's something about the show that is an amazing uh, chance for me because I've, I've got a chance to use a whole building in planning the exhibition and addressing the Hayward's unique architecture, Chris thought very carefully about how people will engage with the work and how they perceive the building. So what we've done is we've actually not constructed any false walls in the exhibition, which is highly unusual. So in the exhibition, the walls that are constructed are themselves artworks. As an example, in the upper galleries, there's a long glass wall that actually serves a purpose, a functional purpose, to hold in uh, another artwork, uh, which is a, a large room half filled with balloons. Um, but this wall, which has been constructed, uh, uses 39 different types of glass uh, throughout its length, and so itself becomes a very beautiful object to look through um, while serving a, a functional purpose. It's an interesting aspect of Martin's work that some of his large-scale works can function as, as background or decoration. So you'll see large wall paintings hung with other works on top of them. So they're not to be treated in a, in a very precious, um, fine art way. So in the lower galleries, we have a live performance piece which is called a piano accompaniment. And throughout the opening hours, visitors come through and, and the piece is played. So you have background music uh, and that background music responds uh, in the same way or functions similarly to the background paintings or drawings on the walls. I think of exhibitions as being basically like very, very long theatre show you know, that lasts for three months instead of two hours. The experience of looking at things is always a live event. You know. and, um, thinking about that is what got me into trying to approach shows like a piece of live, like a live event rather than a, well, rather than a kind of display of dead things, you know. For the first time in the exhibition, you'll see Martin's early work brought together. And unusually for an artist, Martin's early work is very precise and very concise. Creed studying painting 
but he's not learning the techniques of painting or learning how to paint in a sort of masterly way. He's very much questioning the medium and questioning well, what is painting all, all about. And he responds in a very minimal way. And out of those uh, projects and artworks come things like the crumpled ball of paper and the blue tack, which are some of his best known minimal works. Every work is like trying to make something, you know, that, um, trying to jump up and get something. I've often thought when I look at visual work that what you're seeing is the bit left over at the end and that can seem like you're missing out what really happened. Like, show off. A lot of the work in the show, I think, came about from trying to make work that, that, was a, that, that, that makes itself in front of you. So it kind of shows, the, it shows itself being made. And the lights going on and off is a very simple example of that, you know. And uh, I suppose the metronome work is like that as well, and the car, you know. And so, and to me, then, what you're seeing is just, you're just seeing someone, some, something being sort of tried out, you know. So another great work that Creed has uh, decided to put out on the sculpture terraces uh, is actually a Ford-focused car. Its properties define how it works as an artwork. And then 30 seconds later, they switch off and they close down and the car goes silent again. I feel suspicious of art galleries because they tend to be, um, you know, very protect, protective spaces that um, are designed to um, protect things. I, I feel like I ought to try and make work that could be nice to look at out in the outside on the street. I don't want to make work that that kind of needs to be bumped up by a good situation to be any good, you know. One of the new commissions that we're particularly um, happy about at the exhibition, it's a very large brick wall. And it's orientated on the sculpture terrace of the gallery, such that it overlooks Waterloo Bridge. Um, so you can see it both from the, from the outside, uh, within the London landscape, um, and from within the exhibition, your position reverses, and the work has the London landscape as its backdrop. Uh, although bricks can be quite a, a harsh, solid, stable building material um, used in, in, in this way that, that Creed has done, um, they actually take on a sort of pastel-y, softer tone. And in very signature Creed style, Martin's built this wall out of all the different kinds of bricks that he could get together. One of the interesting things that people might find when they come to the gallery is how many of the materials they recognize. Creed's an artist who pulls materials um, from everyday life and he orders them, um, often responding to their natural properties as a way of making us look at things anew. I'm the one for you, I'm your two. For people who come and see these things, often they're uh, humorous, or, but they're also comforting and recognizable um, because it's not something that's unfamiliar to people, um, but offers a number of ways that uh, people can engage with the artwork. I think the world's a big, messy place, and so if you can order things a wee bit, that, uh, to me, that helps me, um, um, because otherwise everything's just a big blobby mass, you know, of chaos. And so having one thing that is kind of simple and understandable to look at or listen to and um, to me that's like a hand hold it helps me from falling into the you know abyss <laughs> and, uh, and uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine what's the point of it What's the point of it? What's the point of it? <laughs> These are only same intonation. <laughs> I think that's the only way I can say it. I, I'm not able to say it any other way.